Now that you have applied for your exemptions, you have received your notice of appraised value, and you believe your property value is still too high, what can you do? Well, you can do what 178,000 property owners in Bear County did last year, and that is file a notice of protest. What are some of the grounds of protest? Well, the two most common are one, that your proposed value of your property is too high, which is a market value um, protest. And then the other most common is that your property is valued unequally with comparable properties. The market value protest is simply that you believe your house would sell for less to a willing buyer than what the appraisal district has listed on your notice of appraised value. With regard to the unequal value with comparable properties, an example is that if you live on a street with five houses that have all of the same type of houses built at the same time with the same furnishings, that property is worth say $200,000 as market value, but your four neighbors are on at $150,000 value, then you can protest under unequal appraisal because you're not being treated equally with those comparable properties and the appraisal district should reduce your value to $150,000. Another area that you can protest is that you applied for an exemption and it does not appear on your notice of appraised value. You can protest any action taken by the appraisal district, which affects the value of your property. Understand that during the protest process, while the chief appraiser has the burden of establishing the property value, you should still do all that you can to show the appraisal district and the appraisal review board why you believe your property value should be lower. One thing to remember is that the deadline in most instances to protest your property value is May 15th. If you fail to file a notice of protest by May 15th, you will likely be prohibited from protesting the value of your property or any other issue with your property until the next year. Let's take a look at the notice of protest form. Understand that your home is appraised using mass appraisal techniques based on neighborhood specific sales data. Your home may be different than what appears through mass appraisal. When you file a notice of protest, this is the best opportunity for the appraisal district staff to look specifically at your property and any evidence that you have to show them regarding individual characteristics which may impact value. Be sure to fill out the notice of protest form carefully. As you will see on the form on the screen, there is a box, for example, for market value, unequal appraised value, um, exemptions that aren't granted. There's also a space to explain why you believe your property value should be lower and you're free to attach additional evidence and supporting documents to support the value that you believe. You can let the appraisal district know if you're willing to appear in person, by Zoom, or by telephone conference. You also have the opportunity to state what you believe the property value should be. Notice the box in red marked evidence requested. That is an important box to check because that tells the appraisal district that you want to see the evidence that the appraisal district has not only on your property, but also the evidence that they have on what they believe to be the comparable properties. And that information will assist you when protesting your value because information may be incorrect. Now that you have completed your notice of protest form, you have several options in which to file your notice of protest with the appraisal district. You can do it online or submitting paper in writing. If you log on to bcad.org, you can create an account and e-file all of your information supporting why you believe your property value is too high 
or the basis for your notice of protest. Through the e-file system, you will get a notification from the appraisal district about your protest, and you may be able to settle it online. The other option is to appeal by mail or hand delivery of your documents to the Bear Appraisal District. Either way works equally well, but the system has now been changed to make it easier for property owners to protest their values. Understand that if you do protest through the e-file system and get an offer and accept that offer online, that ends the protest, protest process. You will not be able to change your mind if you later determine that, for example, your neighbors got a better deal than you. Once you have accepted the settlement offer online, your protest for the subject year is over. If you reject the offer, then you will proceed to the formal hearing. The basic steps in the protest process are providing the appraisal district with your opinion of value of your property, the reasons that we talked about earlier for requesting a change and providing evidence. The appraisal district's appraisers will review that information and may give you an offer of settlement, which you are free to accept or reject. When you file your protest, again, you will be given the option to request evidence and we encourage you to get that information because it allows you to know what evidence the appraisal district is relying on to value your property. You will receive a packet of evidence either online or in mail, which provides you what the appraisal district believes to be the comparable properties to your property. Again, you know your property best and you can determine whether in fact the properties that the appraisal district believes are comparable, whether they are or they're not and you can bring that to the attention of the appraisal district. With regard to submitting your evidence, you're only required to submit it at the latest prior to the hearing before the appraisal district review board. But we believe that the best option is to provide the evidence as soon as possible because that is what enables the appraisal district to specifically review your property and get a better understanding of why you believe your property is overvalued or is not being treated equally with comparable properties. So we encourage you to put your evidence together and submit it with your notice of protest or at some point prior to an informal or formal hearing with representatives of the Appraisal Review Board. Now, let's talk a little bit about evidence that you can submit to the appraisal district to support your belief that your property is being valued too high. One thing you can show are repair estimates, but understand that those repair estimates should be related to big ticket items such as foundation problems, roof problems, plumbing, or electrical. When the appraisal district is looking at uh, or considering items on your property that need to be repaired that cost a lot of money, they're not looking at normal and wear and tear items. So your carpet may be old, your drapes may be old, but those are simply normal wear and tear items that are not taken into consideration in valuing your property. With regard to repair estimates, an example would be your foundation is cracked and it needs substantial repairs. Understand, however, that just because you might present a $15,000 repair estimate to the appraisal district, that does not guarantee that the appraisal district or the appraisal review board will reduce your property value by $15,000. That information, however, will be taken into consideration. And it could be that a cracked foundation that has caused damage that would require $15,000 in repairs may have damaged your property even greater than the $15,000. You may have, for example, a recent appraisal that you bought your house in October of last year. Well, that would be good evidence to present to the appraisal district to show why your current value should be lowered because it is higher than the value that you paid 
for your home just a couple of months prior. Again, with respect to comparable properties, uh, you can find information now online on websites such as Zillow or Trulia. You will know what specific addresses the appraisal district believes are comparable properties to you. And again, you know your neighborhood better than anybody. And so it may be that you're able to show information um, that in fact, the comparable properties presented are not comparable. Uh, another item that some people reference is criminal activity in their neighborhood. Well, if you can show that that criminal activity exists and it affects sales prices in your neighborhood, then that is a factor that the appraisal district may take into consideration. Now that you have submitted your notice of protest and supporting evidence, let's talk about the hearing process. All right, so you've heard from Bill about the how to get your evidence. So what we what I would like to cover is some reminders for approaching, for preparing or approaching your informal hearing. Um, the first one is to be prepared. And my best advice on this would be to practice your presentation. Uh, in my experience, my kids are a great audience and most critical. So whoever you may have available, I recommend practicing your presentation ahead of time and getting it to under 10 or 15, getting it within the 10 to 15 minute range. Be prepared if you've provided evidence ahead of time to discuss that evidence at, at the informal hearing. One of the things that I find best is to label your documentation. So that way you can easily reference it throughout your presentation. As Bill touched on, you know your property best and you have access to resources that the Bear Appraisal District might not necessarily have. So a key thing to remember is do not assume that the Bear Appraisal District knows everything that you know. This is your chance to educate them and provide the information that you, that you know and to advocate for your for yourself. Um, a common myth that I often hear from time to time is that Bear Appraisal District employees get a bonus for holding the value. So they're just not gonna listen to anything you say. Um, I worked at the Bear Appraisal District for 10 years and I can assure you that holding the value was never a factor for compensation. Really what it comes down to is the appraiser needs information to support and explain a reduction if one is appropriate. And keep in mind that a lot of the protests are settled informally. In fact, just last year in 20, 2022, more than 70% of the protests were settled at the informal hearing. So you've gone through the informal hearing. Maybe you didn't get a result or an offer that you accepted. What's the next step? The next step is going to be uh, proceeding to what is called a formal hearing. And this is where you meet with the appraisal review board. The appraisal review board will generally consist of three members. They are a neutral party that will hear your presentation and a presentation from the Bear Appraisal District and then determine what the value of your property will be for that year. Now, I understand that this process can be intimidating. It was intimidating for even some of my family members even when they knew several of the people at the Bear Appraisal District. But here's some tips for what you can do. Come prepared with a specific value. I would often, I would recommend leading with that value and then following up with, it, with your evidence to explain why you're requesting that value. Keep in mind that you're limited to 10 pictures or less. So pick your best picture and try and find pictures like Bill said that have context. So for example, if you're trying to show cracks in your property, maybe take that picture next to a ruler and then you can explain that at the formal hearing. Again, just another reminder, we can't emphasize this enough to request documentation at the time of you when you follow your protest. So that way you are, you are knowledgeable and understand what the Bear Appraisal District's presentation so we've talked about what to do. Let's talk about some things not to do. Don't go in and with a primary complaint that you can't afford your taxes. It may not surprise you that that is a common complaint, but it's not something that's, that can be used to reduce your property value. The Bear Appraisal District does not set the tax rate. They only decide what your home is worth. 
So therefore it's, there's no value in coming in and just saying, I can't afford my taxes. The second thing is to not give a long rambling presentation. Again, a lot of these formal hearings are very concise. You have 15 minutes or less. So be prepared to get all your best points out at, at, at the forefront. Now, remember most of the property, uh, property protests results in a lower value. Now you may not get the value that you wanted, but it's definitely worth pursuing. But one thing to keep in mind, as you may have noted from the video segment talking about the appraisal notice, is that sometimes you may get a reduction in your market value, but doesn't necessarily change what you pay in taxes. What does that mean? Well, if you have a homestead exemption, you may have, have, may have a homestead exemption cap, which means that the market value and the taxable value of your property are going to be different. Therefore, it's helpful to look at the notice of appraised value and understand what your taxable value is. And that's the number that you are going to be hoping to lower if you want to see a reduction in your property taxes. Just breaking it up with a little bit of humor. If I can find happiness in my own backyard, will it increase my property taxes? So what happens if you've gone through the informal hearing You've done the formal hearing, you've gotten what's called an, an order from the appraisal review board, and you're still not happy. Well, let's understand and appreciate what the next steps might be. Once the um, a appraisal review board rules on your protest, they're going to send you that order. And as you see here on this slide, there's certain deadlines that have to be followed if you want to proceed with the next step. How do you determine if you wanna take that next step? Well, something to keep in mind is that while it is free and of no cost to you to go through the protest process with the appraisal district and the appraisal review board, they are costs and fees associated with each of these appeal avenues. At a minimum, you can expect to spend about $450. So something to keep in mind is, is the cost to proceed to the next step going to be um, more than what you might potentially save in your property taxes. If, again, if you have any questions about the appeal process or what next steps would be, the Bear Appraisal District has a lot of resources on their website. You can also contact them with some, to get additional information. And you'll see here on the bottom of the slide, one thing to note is to proceed to the appellate process there is a requirement that you've made a conditional payment of your taxes. What does that mean? Well, if the payment deadline is coming up for your property, you cannot ignore that deadline and pay zero because that will be the equivalent of waiving your right to an appeal. Generally, as a rule of thumb, our recommendation is that you would pay um, property taxes based on what you paid the prior year. 